Welcome back to another three questions in three minutes with our LGBTQ plus power players. Today, I am joined by Matthew Skinner, executive director of the Richard C. Thela LGBTQ Commission of the New York Courts. That is quite a mouthful, Matthew. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. So uh, I'm really curious to hear from you. Courts have long been the battleground for civil rights issues, but more and more they are really the battleground for LGBTQ plus equality uh, and those issues as well. So I'm asking, you know, we've seen in other states, Texas, Florida, Louisiana, just last month introduced or revived their own don't say gay bill. And so are you seeing anything in the New York courts that is concerning to you? You know, we're very lucky um, to have a very different uh, state legislature and governor in New York um, that is not passing these horrible, um, you know, rollbacks of people's fundamental rights and trying to ban transgender people from public life and uh, prohibit people from mentioning LGBTQ people in school. Um, so, unfortunately, you know, thankfully, um, we don't have these cases in our courts because we don't have these laws in our state. Um, but, uh, you know, one thing just on a, on a local level, I think I can mention, we recently passed uh, and it, w it went into effect late in 2021, the Gender Recognition Act in New York. And we got a written decision earlier in May um, for a, a pro se petitioner trying to change their identity documents, and it was a denial. Even with the, the the great policies that we've enacted in New York and much more progressive policies, we still have stumbling blocks in New York. And I think um, there's some things we just need to work through to fully implement the GRA to to not uh, to avoid another situation like that. And I think this is kind of where the commission comes in too, because you guys provide training, um, you guys kind of cultivate this network among bar associations and different advocacy groups. So why is it important to have institutions or organizations like the commission in our court system? You know, for a long time, the LGBTQ community did not have a voice in our state court system. Um, you know, part of this as a product of having many more, um, L and G judges. Um, we're still working on uh, other parts of the acronym. We had a chief judge who, and a chief administrative judge who really felt like it was time for us to have sort of a, and a fully, um, you know, a, an, an institutional place at the table. And that's how the sort of commission came to be. And um, so we're really lucky to have it here in New York. And I think it's done a lot to just, uh, in ways big and small, to change. Um, change the culture in the court system, to uh, raise awareness in the court system, to help uh, other LGBTQ people get um, elected or appointed as judges, um, more LGBTQ people as employees of the court system. Um, so it's been, um, I think, a wonderful thing that we're, we're really lucky to have here in New York. So how might, you know, increased representation, a fuller participation of LGBTQ folks in the court system change the institution? Uh, what do you think? You know, one just example that comes to mind, you know, that uh, my co-chairs were recently talking about this on a, on a different podcast, but in 2006, our state high court um, had, had ruled that there's no right to marry uh, under the state constitution for same-sex couples. And the way the decision was written, it was really it wasn't only just a, a denial of rights, but also written in a really sort of homophobic way. And it's something that you'd notice that, you know, if there was, perhaps if there was um, an LGBTQ judge on the, the court at that time, we might not have gotten a different result, but we wouldn't have gotten a decision that was written in such a really wrenching, um, demoralizing fashion. Um, so I think that's just like a small example of how having um, a being in the room where it happens, if you will, can um, change the culture just slightly, you know, make people think twice before they they say awful things. And, um, you know, it, sometimes in small ways, sometimes in big ways, change, change outcomes and improve access to justice. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Matt, for joining me and for being an LGBTQ plus power player. <laughs> Thanks again.